Hello everybody, this is Thomas Odd from NeuralMarketTrends.com and welcome to a new video on using RapidMiner to predict historical volatility in the S&P 500. I'm really excited to be back. It's been a long time since I made a new video and I hope you enjoy it. So let's get started. Right now I have RapidMiner 7.6 loaded and I have a process here and we'll talk about each little operator and sub process in a minute but what am I trying to do in this particular video well let's head over to my website click over here and let's find the post called predicting historical volatility for the S&P 500 if you click on that post you'll see that I included the XML data for the process you just saw so you can quickly come down and grab it and put it in and play along with it. Now what I did in this process many years ago was recreate a research paper at least the portion that predicted historical volatility. If you have come up here and click on this link the research paper will load in and this research paper was done in 2007 and it relates to determining and predicting the trend, the direction of the trend, for historical volatility. If you can predict that five trading days out from Friday to Friday, compare it to an implied volatility of the S&P 500, and depending on if they converge or diverge or stay the same, certain types of option trades are taken. Straddles, collars, and so forth. I'm not going to talk about those trades. I'm only going to talk about the process that predicted the historical volatility. Also, if you need to get data, and you can apply any other financial instrument to this as well, you would come over to Yahoo Finance, come to historical data. In this case here, I'm getting historical data from the S&P 500. And in order for this process to work, you need a minimum of two years of data. So make sure you get two, <clears throat> two years of data there. Hit apply and then download uh, over here. Okay, So once again you can come down over here to my website and you can get the process and you can get the research paper and also at the bottom of the post I also included the data that I used to run this model. Okay, Now let's get back to the process here. A couple different things. I have two sub-processes here, which I'll pop open in a minute and we'll see what they do. But one loads the data, one does some data prep. I have two windowing operators, which are from the series extension. I have an optimized parameter operator. And inside, I'm doing a sliding window validation with a support vector machine set to a radial an RBF kernel. And apply SVM model and then another generates attributes operator. And that's really, that's it. Now, um, I've already run this because this takes with the optimization uh, over an hour to run. But we're not going to run it here. We're just going to show you the results in this process. So let's click on the first subprocess. I use a read CSV to download the CSV file. And I have a couple of other operators in here that I use. One is a lag series. Now, I use the lag series to actually lag the closing price. What I'm trying to do is prepare or create a new set of attributes to calculate the basic historical volatility. Historical volatility is just the variance of the price over a certain time period. And you need to use natural log and some square root functions. Very simple calculation to actually calculate it. So here I start off by lagging the series. So I take the close, I create another one, another column called close-0, and lag it. Here's where I do the natural log calculation in a generate attributes. I create a new attribute called log returns and just do natural log close over close minus 1. Sorry, uh, if I was 0, it's minus 1. And then I do some selection of the attributes. Uh, once I've calculated natural log, I don't need that close-1 column anymore. So I get rid of it. And then I'm left with one missing value because I lagged it, so I replace that with zero. Very simple, just loading the data and prep and calculating the historical volatility. This next subprocess is a little more complex, but what I'm doing is in the paper, it requires you to download the data on a Friday and then 
create a prediction system for five days or for the next Friday. So that's five trading days ahead. So that's what this windowing operator does. It windows the data into five steps ahead. I then use a generate aggregation operator to calculate the standard deviation of the historical volatilities and add that to each single row or each single example set. I do a little bit more cleaning and I generate some uh, inter-HV um, dummy uh, um, attributes just in, in the process as I need. Uh, then I come here and I do some renaming, some more selection. I do some date conversions that I need from nominal to date and back to date to numerical and so forth. And I finally lag the HV and I create a moving average. In the process from the research paper, I need to create three columns. One is my five-day historical volatility look ahead. And I need to create a moving, a 13-day moving average of the historical volatility. And I need to create a naive forecast, which is just taking the last, um, taking the last value of the historical volatility and moving it forward by one day. So I do all this work. This is where the heavy ETL work and the data prep goes for the modeling. Finally, what I do is then I just create a window. I'm just trying to do a one step ahead. So, um, I transform everything so that everything is five days ahead and then I try to predict the next five days here. And I use the same windowing just for prediction where I take the same data and I try to predict how good I am on it. Uh, and then I apply my model and then I also create a, uh, an extra column for an absolute error. This was just something that I wanted to do because volatility is volatile, right? It's very sticky. So a lot of times when the, when the volatility is moving in, this, in the same trend or the same direction, the volatility tends to collapse, so the absolute error of the predictions tend to drop as well, too. But then when something happens, poof, right? When volatility becomes volatile, uh, that's when things get interesting, of course, and, direct, and trends change. So let's just take a look at the optimized parameter operator. In here, I have a sliding window validation, which I'm optimizing training window and testing window. I also have a log here, which I also then uh, capture certain things that I'm trying to optimize. Uh, the... Uh, gamma, the C for the support vector machine, training with, testing with, measuring what the forecast performance is, and also the cumulative training option in, in this. So what you see here is um, the sliding window validation can say, well, you can, individ you can take the entire data set as you're building and moving the window over, keep building you know, more data into it, which does cause the training time to get long. And you can see how does it apply to your predictions. And real quick, just double clicking in this here, it's just a support vector machine with an RBF kernel. And I'm modifying the gamma and the C, and I'm just measuring the forecast performance uh, one week or five, which is five days, one week ahead from Friday to Friday. Okay. So when I first run all this data, my initial training data looks like this. Right? Here's my naive base. Uh, calculation, which is one step ahead, my historical 13-day uh, moving average. Then I have an S&P 500 close that I left in there, as well as my, histor my historical five-day volatility, and then some dates. When I run this process, it takes approximately, uh, you know, say, an hour or so to run on my small machine. Uh, I have a very small machine, approximately about eight gigs of uh, memory is available. Um, it's just a simple laptop. Uh, so forth. So be aware that this could be heavily intensive. Of course, you don't need to add the S&P 500 close if you don't want to, and you may consider dropping or adding additional uh, attributes as you see fit. Okay. So when I run through the process, my forecasting performance, which is usually in the range of about 60 to 75 percent or, or a little bit over that, uh, comes out as 77.7 percent. Now, this model gets retrained every Friday. So this accuracy changes, and it does swing between, say, 60 and 75%. In this case, it's a little bit better, 77%. So be aware of that. Um, and when you field test this model, you'll see that, yep, 7 times out of 10, your prediction of the trend, not an actual value, the prediction of the trend up or down is actually pretty good. Okay. Uh, checking out the log file, you can see here all the different, I have 900, uh, permutations, you can see how it all did and changed the forecast and so forth. And you can see here that 
Um, if I go to my parameter set optimizer grid, the best one is a training window of 9, testing window of 12, gamma 0.01, and a C of 0. So the, what that means is that um, it's using a training window of about 9 weeks, a testing window of about 12 weeks with this type of kernel and gamma. All right. So there you have it. Um, that's, uh, oh, 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 we, no, I'm not done yet. We need to actually see the predictions. So let's come over here and look at the data. So when it actually comes down here, it predicts an actual label here. And so this is an actual value. Now, don't, don't read too much into the actual value. Really what this needs to be trans or, conf or transformed into is up or down previously from, from this one. So, what this is saying is, is that um, for one week ahead here, uh, this is going to be lower. The historical volatility is being forecast as being lower than last week here. So, and then if this one is 0.23, it's being forecast as 0.1. So sometimes you see there's some bumps, of course, right? But in general, if I look at it from a chart, it does tend to mimic the trend fairly well. Uh, the blue line is the prediction label. So it does tend to do that very well. And there's my alarm clock, and I think it's time for me to call it a day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This is Thomas Ott for NeuralMarketTrends.com, your data science and analytics hub. Have a great day.